Howdy, howdy, y'all. My name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. Welcome, or welcome back to my channel. I am all about slowing down, gazing inwards, and playing with makeup. I am so excited to be just playing with makeup with you today. I have new things to my channel. We've got some nude sticks, crazy popular colors of Bondi Bay, and then we also have In the Nude and Cosmetics little girl here that is probably just burned to your eyeballs by now. If you haven't seen that, I don't know what rock we've both been living in, but this is new to my channel as well. And I have some, you know, really fun cream products. I have some eyeshadow palettes here, um, two in fact, and a little bit of dewy balmness. Please stick around if you are so inclined. Subscribe or buy me a coffee. Link that down below if you don't know what that means. And we'll get right into it. Good morning. It is snowing outside right now. It's been a while since I've come at you with like pure just makeup. Let's get ready together content. So I'm going to put on like way more makeup than I usually do, starting with my base. Starting with the La Roche-Posay 50 SPF. This is their mineral untinted formula. It comes out bright white, but it does blend in. I find it does start to sink in and I don't have too much of a problem with white cast. I do notice it though. Um, it gets a little milky, especially near my chin. Um, and sometimes I do layer this with the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. And if you've used that before as well, you know that it has SPF of 40. And with that, you know, I don't ever feel like that's enough. So I do layer it on, but then that gets even milkier. So I always feel like I have a bit too much of a, an opacity to my skin, especially around my chin, which is a problem area for me. I'm gonna let that soak in. Probably could have used more today, but again, I'm putting so much on my face that I'm a little bit tentative. Two more primey things are the Chanel Le Beige. And I wanted to show you what this looked like um, before I had mixed it up. Maybe you can see it through that tiny little slit window right there, but I had reached maybe half bottle almost already. And it does settle pretty quickly if you just leave it on a shelf. Um, but this has been tossed around my bag a little bit. So I bought this back in September. It was part of my low buy um, splurge. One of my like intended purchases during my low buy where I was budgeting a lot more heavily than I intend to this year. And I'm pleasantly surprised. I do really enjoy this. I don't think I'll ever get it again. It is their Le Beige line. It's the Pearly Glow. It has a 12 month shelf life. So I'm really excited that I'm hopefully going to get through this in time for it to expire, which rarely happens. Again, I'm going in with more product than usual. So I did not use a full pump just there, but that's what it looks like on the skin. It is so pearlescent. It's like a very fluid formula, almost, um, almost like a serum. I would say there is a floral scent to it. It dissipates pretty quickly but it does leave my skin a really thin veil of juiciness. I don't think it's quite a glow. I don't think it's quite a dewiness, but it gives like a little sheen. No metallics are detected, absolutely no sparkles are detected. It just gives my skin like a little boost. And for that, I think it's like one of the best um, expensive looking skin moments, if you know what I mean. Like if you want it to be the most down low look if you want it to be seen in person. I don't think you can go for this. It's just so barely there. It's really, really meant for the most subtle highlight that you want, but it will stay. So unlike a dewy balm, which I actually have here, this is the 28 Super Dew No Shade. Um, I'll be using this last in my routine. Unlike this, it will melt and move and kind of, it, it'll still stay, but it really is dependent on the weather and your activities and whatnot. I think this is one of those really good ones, putting on a base, letting it just do its thing quietly from the background. Um, but I don't think I need to buy it again because it was 48, 50 US dollars. Oh, I actually much prefer this next product. It is the RMS Beauty Rich and Radiance uh, Master Radiance. I think it's the base, yeah. Master Radiance base, there you go. This is in their lighter shade. They have two shades out right now and they're not meant to match a skin tone, but they are meant to match uh, the type of undertone you're going for or the type of glow that you're going for. Some creams are meant to, you know, boost more like a highlight. Some are meant to give you a bronzy sun-kissed look as well as a sheen. And this one is meant to do the former. 
and this is really quite a bit of product. Um, I know we are very familiar with the RMS Beauty line, and if you haven't seen their, you know, Living Luminizers or their, their regular concealer pot, it is the same across the board, no matter what is in it, their lip to cheeks, etc. And then this is the Master and Radiance. They look like they would stack. So yeah, they're the exact same like size from this aerial view. There's no RMS Beauty on the cap of this, but this is so much taller than this guy. Both glass, they gave you so much product and I've been really piling this on. I literally go in with a finger, I pick up quite a bit. It's not like a puny tiny amount, it is literally piled up there on my finger. And they give you so much that I feel like it's intended to go all over your face and really buff it into the skin. Um, I have no problem doing that. It has so many ingredients to me that are nourishing, like meadow foam oil. It's supposed to be really moisturizing and not only will it give you that glow, but it'll actually plump up your skin, which I love. Um, and I do put this on as a base. You can use it as a highlighter as well. But I found, and I used just my just my hands here, I found that it really, really does what it says it will, but I don't think I'll use this pot in 12 months because I looked at the bottoms, it is meant to expire in 12 months, so is the concealer pot, and you can just only imagine <laughs> how much of each I am using. So I'm going in right under my brow. I don't even mind if it gets into my brow hairs a little bit there too. I could put a little bit on my cupid's bow, but I'm really not concerned about that right now. But look at that highlight. I am really floored when I bought this. It just seemed too sparkly. I was really scared um, because it just seemed like the whole thing is meant to be just shine. And when I start buffing this in, it, it just, it blew me away. I thought it was gonna be way too much or way too slippy or way too color pigmented, but look how metallic that is. And I think this is another great alternative to that Hollywood Flawless Filter. I think it's that's what it's called from Charlotte Tilbury because it does have like a slightly grittier base, if you if you know what I mean. It's not totally detectably glitterier, but it does have a little hint more sandiness not on the feel, but just on the look compared to something like the Chanel or the Charlotte Tilbury, which is just so finely pearlized that it just seems like a metallic liquid. This one seems to have a little bit of a grit to it. And to me, that's a little bit more natural. It actually helps sink into my skin. It buffs into the skin. It actually starts to act in a different way. And I just don't know how to explain it. Maybe we can zoom you in. Hello. Yes, I am really, really happy with this. I'm really happy with this product and it stays just like that too. It just makes me look really dewy and the feel of my skin isn't more oily or anything like that. It's really, really wonderful. On cover up, this is in the shade 22 and I'm going to just pop it onto the areas that I know I need it. I can kind of memorize it by heart already. I love putting it right under my lips, not over my lips, but right under because I have some darkness there. Right around my nose, I have like a little bit of acne scarring that won't go away on the side of my forehead here. And then when it comes to the under eyes, I really like to pop it right where the darkness starts to creep into my tear ducts. There's like a little bunny hill swoop that goes up and I like to just cover a little bit of that runway. I don't like to cover anything beyond that because to me it's superfluous. I just want it to tamp down just a little bit of that transition of darkness, but I don't wanna cover any of my natural darkness right around my eye. I find that that's the most natural way for me to do this. Looks like I do have a bit of a spot coming up on my nose, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on that area. Zoom me back out, not too far out. I'm not doing anything really detailed or specific, so I just kind of want you to see my whole face. All right, so I feel like my base is kind of there. I'm really ready to move on to the next step. I'm so excited also to show you this. This is the Salt New York larger palette, the palette, and it's in the French gray color. I think that's the only color they offer right now. This is the palette I've been using every single day, and ever since I bought this, I've been into the world of Cream makeup, customizable palette like pans, 
and depotting all of my eyeshadows to use only the ones that I use all the time. Instead of taking like an entire color story, I will have only a curation of colors. Doesn't that sound like exactly how it not should be, but could be? But to me, that was never an option. It was always, I have to bring this palette, this chocolate bar, this giant foam thing that has 18 different shades. And inevitably I had to build my look around either that, or, you know, I had 10 specific little tiny bottles and pencils and whirls and wonder gigs and everything would just like pile into a bag and that would be my makeup. This is now my makeup. I still have obviously some other accoutrement here in front of me, but it's because, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. Most of it though, if I had to grab and go, it would be in this little guy here. So I've talked about this before. If you are interested in knowing more about my full review of Salt New York, like I will hit you up. I have a full video on that. Um, but ever since I have bought more colors from Kikichi as well as populated it with some different eye shadows. So this is actually all of the pigments that go onto my face normally. Um, you will notice though that I'm missing a blush and that's because I've tried about three of her blushes and none of them are quite the exact color that I want. Um, you can mix them but they're almost too vibrant. I'm, I realize that I want more of a muted rosy beachy peach. Obviously I have a very run-of-the-mill like right between light and medium skin tone but my undertones are really specific and I do tan really um, well during the summer so Actually, my skin can transition quite wildly during summer to winter and vice versa. Um, and so it's really hard to, to find, at least for me, those perfect rosy milky nudes that are going to show up on my skin tone to begin with, but then aren't too milky, um, but aren't too deep and too vibrant because being kind of in the middle of that spectrum, it does I, it does lean either way. So I've been trying to figure that out, but I can say for, with confidence that Kiki G's four cream tint pros right here are bomb. These are her Radiant in Gold and Bronze. I use this actually as a contour and I'll show you how good that looks on the skin. Then I have cream bronzers in the light medium and then just the medium. I think that's what that's called. I just love mixing all of these. So let me show you those. I'm so excited. And then for blush, I actually use just a lipstick. I have been really culling my collection and I've been using Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Fawn, but we'll get to that. Today I have some other really exciting new to my channel. Um, these I bought at the tail end of 2020 and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to blow my budget. Just use all of what I had allotted for my low buy because I hadn't spent up all the money and I bought a bunch of stuff. This isn't all of it, but I'm so excited because I've never talked about these on my channel. M Cosmetics, need I say more? Need I say more. And then of course we have Bondi Bay and In the Nude from Nude Sticks. So I have some exciting things in front of me and let me just show you. Before I get into it. I'm so close to getting into it, I promise. Um, I have three brush options and I thought I'd talk about these because I've been really playing with brushes with creams. And this is one that maybe you'll recognize from Westman Atelier. It is her large blender brush. It is so expensive, but it is so soft and it is completely flat. Now, if you look at these other two, this is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe My Everything brush, and it has a tapered front to it, but it is so much less dense. It's really airy and, and you can use it for powders, but I found that it's actually perfect for creams. The size is perfect for applying to my face without it being too much of a large area. Actually, I think this is working much better than this, even though this is kind of intended for sweeping all over your face. This is the stippling brush from, I think it's called the Wave Stippling Brush, but anyway, Straight and Wavy 122 from Makeup Forever. And this is kind of my dupe for the e.l.f. large stippling brush that has fallen off the face of the earth. It has that duo tier fiber that gets really stipply at the front, intensifies in density in the core, so it can really dig in there. And every time I watch Alana Davidson's work, her work here on YouTube, she uses something just like this and she just like literally punches it into her face and just scrubs away really lightly, but it just seems like she's doing so much like magic work 
and then it blends perfectly, especially cream bronzers and cream blushes. So I thought these were three contenders. I'll use all three of them and show you how I like to use them. Side note, this is what the Le Beige is looking like right now, just f during the time that I was talking, and that's what I mean by it settles very quickly. All right, without further ado, let us dive into this baby here. She is gorgeous, like so heavy, so chunky, but I love that she fits in a really mini sized palette. I think that she is even, see how small that is? The hilt is really short compared to the others, and I love it because I can travel with this. Now I'm going to go in in this order with the gold first, then the bronze, then mix these two, the light and medium. This actually fits just perfectly into a single pan, and I'm not pressing too hard, but I am kind of trying to activate the top of this product. And you'll find that you won't see too much of a color on top of this. Obviously it's stained a little bit, but I find, I find with these brushes, not a lot of product gets into these bristles because there's such a barrier of defense. There are so many bristles in there that it doesn't pick up the product and then just eat it, which I love. So I think this was meant for just sweeping across your face and depositing the most subtle. I think this is all about subtlety. I think Gucci is all about something that blends instantly and I'll give her that, it really does. It seems like that is the perfect veil of color that if I were going for the most subtle look, I never have to feel like I'm putting on too much. And I've watched a lot of her videos and she really goes in a horizontal way across the face and it's very light. There's no scrubbing, there is no patting. <laughs> And uh, especially with this brush, she really kind of sweeps it in a motion horizontally across the face. And I'm just going back into that gold color. It's actually extremely pigmented. Kiki G will do you no wrong here. And I've never thought I could use this type of color on my face. I never thought that that would be something that I would want to do, let alone that I could do. Let me just show you what this looks like straight out of the pan. I mean, come on, looking at that, it's just, it's an eyeshadow in my mind, you know? And look how beautiful and unabashed that color is. It really is not stepping away from true gold. It has a lot of a copper sheen to it, but it's really gold. And then I was so scared to use this, guys. I was so scared. Um, and you can see that if I put on too much, it will give me that too fakey orange bake kind of look because my skin tone just pulls everything into a yellow direction. So I'm gonna wipe that off. But on my face, with that blender brush, it just gave me a little kiss. And that's all I wanted, that's all I wanted. And I find that anytime I find a pink blush and I mix it with a little bit of this, a little more heavily, um, it'll give me that perfect peachy glow. So next I'm going in with the bronze shade, and again, I am just very lightly coaxing a little bit out of that pan. This is also not a shade to be messed with, and I'm using this as a contour shade. It literally is that easy. I just swept it on once, swept it on twice. You can go over it if you want, but honestly, I don't think I even need to. And same here. And normally I would use a contour shade, Kiki G does have, or Salt New York does have a contour shade and it is the light medium contour that I use. And that is a really nice contour shade, but somehow this bronze really works on my skin. It really does. And I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna take a little bit on my nose, cause why not? It's so subtle. And again, this is one of those colors that you don't wanna be seen messing around with. Look at that, just absolutely gorgeous, like a true bronze, true bronze. So maybe now it might be useful to do like a little side-by-side -side comparison. I might just do a little bit of voguing here while I wait and see if I cut in another thing of me with a bare face talking, just because I know it feels like I didn't do much, but it really, this is the kind of base skin that I love. I just want this every single day of my life. And guess what? I can get it because <laughs> of these wonderful people here at Salt New York. All right, let's put some actual pigments on my face. I know we've all been dying. <clears throat> no, actually what I've been dying to do is put some of this Lip Whip by Cary Gran. This is their 
rosy gold color. It is a true lip whip. Let's see if she will focus. I don't know how to tell you about this product. I've been racking my brain ever since I bought this about how to describe to you why this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, lip products. It is not a pure non-colored lip balm, but I'm treating it like a lip balm. It's not a gloss, but I also treat it like a gloss. It is perfect um, in every way, and I love it. I've never wanted to buy something from Cary Grand before. It comes in this beautiful packaging, and they have several colors, but I think they're all, um, you know, relatively sheer enough, except one of their cranberry, like, Suji shades. That has a lot of pigment, but anyway, most of them do kind of tamp down and play with the color of your natural lips. So I love this. I think this is the rosy gold color that is quite universal. And I love that on the back it says, used by January 2022. Oh, please. Oh, please. Could you just focus? Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it when things are just user friendly. No matter how cold I am, like sometimes my lip balms won't warm up to my skin because I'm just so cold and it takes a long time for it to warm up and to look like that juicy pouty lip that I want. This is, it never steers me wrong. Melts in, it doesn't disappear, but it doesn't feel waxy like those fresh sugar ones. Oh, this is just so perfect. I'll have to talk about it again in this uh, different video, otherwise I'm never gonna get anywhere, but it does leave a little bit of a hint of gold fleck on the lips and it just looks a little bit more luminous and it goes with the whole skin look that I'm that I'm having. What I'm gonna do is do one side with both of these bronzers and then one side with the Bondi Bay and then we'll sh show the comparison and then I'll do a little mix of both to even them out if that makes sense. So I'm gonna just use this Jaclyn Hill Morphe brush and tap the top which is the light medium shade. This fits perfectly in the pan this is going straight onto the skin, and I'm going to cusp my cheekbones, just go right over into my temples, and then go straight down in that classic three, and maybe just a little bit on my nose. Okay, how easy was that? Gives me a little bit of a good look right there, you know? Subtle, but that gold and that bronze already is doing a little bit of work, but this is intensifying that. So when I look straight on, it looks like this side of my face is quite beautifully bronzed. And so I use the let the medium shade actually quite sparingly. Um, it is a little bit too pigmented for my skin, but it is so warming and so pretty. So I literally am bouncing this and I can't believe how well this brush picks it up and deposits. It's so soft, it looks kind of wimpy, and I was afraid, especially looking at that Westman Atelier blender brush, I was like, okay, I need something really dense, I need a lot of bristles to work with, but nope, just pouncing. I'm just pouncing right here, and look how beautiful and airbrushed that is turning out. So, on this other side here, we're gonna go in straight with this Bondi Bay by Nude Sticks, and I've been playing with this as well, just to be able to have an opinion on this because it is so saturated in the market of YouTube. No, it is it is just everywhere on YouTube and I'm afraid to just draw it on. Maybe if I look straight at you. It does have a beautiful little matte, demi-matte, satiny finish. I'm really loving it so far. I haven't removed the brushes because what I've been trying to do is if I have these two colors, say, I will use the brushes on the opposite color. So if I'm using the bronzer first, I would open the bronzer, open the bottom of this blush, and then use the brush from the blush and then stick it on. And I've been trying that and it seems to be working pretty well. The brush actually isn't too bad. Um, I know it's not like everybody's favorite. So this has been sitting on my skin for a little bit because I've been talking, but we're gonna go in with that Makeup Forever stippling brush. And I am just going to hold my hair up and use the camera's viewfinder to show you how quickly that just blends out. And then I'm gonna move down to my chin. It does seem like a very peachy, almost apricot-y brown. And I don't know, I'm not mad at that color. I just don't understand why so many people love it so much. Um, maybe if I had a different complexion, 
it would make a lot more sense to me, but right now I feel like the peachy orangeness is fighting with a little bit of my sallowness. Can you see that this strip of skin here where there's basically no color pigment? It seems almost blue. At least that's what it's looking like to me. Um, it could be my lighting situation as well, but because my skin is so sallow, the orange and pulling the blue out of my green skin, basically. So I'm liking that. I am liking how quickly that delivered as well as that product blended out. I can see that there's a little bit more depth play coming out here. Um, and this is more of a one and done single tone, of course. So let's go in with the opposite things. Right now, I just want to look slightly bronzed, mostly sculpted sculpted and bronzed and have a very subtle blush look and I just want it to look kind of expensive like kind of luxe like of course you can look expensive and luxe with so many other different types of looks but the way that I envision this type of luxe is I'm always outdoors and I feel like I'm really hydrated I take care of my skin I'm well rested and I'm always out adventuring and I don't really have time to put makeup on hence the the slight flush is kind of a true this is what I look like when I just have been chasing zebras kind of uh, look or you know this is also my like I'm at the beach all the time I think the look I'm going for is really sun-kissed and natural and I'm trying really hard not to make it look too feminine. I think I want it to look sculpted and kind of like I'm out in a desert or out by the beach all the time and the flush is quite natural to my skin but I don't want to look sunburnt. I don't want to look like a beach mermaid necessarily. Let us go back in with Bondi Bay one more time. I am going to go in with the Jaclyn Hill Morphe brush over here. It's quite apricot. It does look like I'm wearing blush already. Do I go over the bridge of my nose? Yes, I do. And wipe any excess off on my lids and connect it to my temple. I spend so much time in these first few steps, especially with skincare, getting the finish of my skin just how I like it. And that is also very new to me. I've always focused on eyes and lips and even brows. Excuse me, I have a hair somewhere, an errant hair that's just tickling me to no end. And beforehand, I would just not want to care about that. It would be too many steps, but now I care so much about that that it's, it's a joy to put this type of stuff on. So let's move on to blush. And like I mentioned, I do use a lipstick. Sorry, that hair might have migrated. I do use a lipstick normally but I also have two really exciting blushes to use for you today. Okay, deep dive. Let's just take a one beat, one beat, and look at the finish of my skin. It is just so luminous. It really feels sun-kissed and so dewy, wet. I just love it. And I'm just gonna draw it onto my cheek. I'm going to do a little bit of a crisscrossy little heart here. And the more I just kind of haphazardly sweep it all over my face, the less I'm happy with the way my face looks sculpted. And it feels like I'm undoing a lot of work that I had already done with the bronzers and the contour and whatnot, highlighty even. And this just sets up, the blush is kind of the key point, it's the key pivot to an eye look, to a lip color. It really brings the color to my face, but also locks in the structure. And I find that if I go too far towards my nose, like in this area here, it starts to look a little closed. If I go too far below my cheek, or sometimes the blush can go over the contour and everything and, and start to like migrate down, it doesn't work. And it has to really connect with the outer part of my eye, almost up into my temple. And that is the most natural sculpting look for me that I have found. And to do that, it does re require a smaller brush or my fingers, just a smaller way to apply it. And if I go in and I spread it out a little bit too much, I usually go in just a little bit more with my fingers and pat it right on this kind of contour, this little area, almost literally a straight line from the corners of my eyes to my mouth, but stopping right before I hit that line. So I'm loving this blush. It is very apricot as well, um, but it, it works. And uh, I'm still gonna put on blush. I'm still gonna put on more blush because I, again, have not tried this on camera for you. I find this extremely annoying. <laughs> 
The packaging is so annoying and I know that people have talked about this before but I am one to join the chorus here. I just cannot get my products messy. It just drives me insane. And uh, like a lip product or a mascara, I can't pump and wipe and oh man, when things get cruddy under a cap, it is really hard for me to enjoy that experience. I'm not sure why. I'm a pretty dreamy Pisces and one that's messy as well. But here we go. That's the serum blush. That is the shade Rose Milk. And you'll see that it's it's quite complementary to the shade that I just put down in the nude by Nude Sticks. Now, unfortunately, um, putting these both down, I didn't realize that they would pick up each other, but they are. Maybe you can see there's like a little bald spot where I'm placing this down. And did I just ruin everything? No, no, it's just makeup. I can always fix it. I can always just massage it in. Maybe it just wants to meet my skin. It just wants to go a little layer deeper and I'll let it do that. Keep on tapping. Yeah, I kind of wish I didn't do that, but you know, maybe this is just, this is just a demonstration on how this serum blush really is meant to be worked kind of on its own or really closer to the skin, not with too much makeup on. It's one of those things that is really meant to be skincare and makeup. And this is kind of what I mean. It just looks like I have a swath of peach and it's not really differentiated from my contour colors, my bronze colors, and now it's just a little bit too wide. I don't love that. I'm going to take it all down a notch by just pressing. Today is one of those days, but let me show you what it looks like with a little bit of lipstick on, on my cheeks. This is the Lisa Eldridge in Velvet Fawn, and it really gives a velvet finish, and it matches my skin really well, matches my lips really well, and it goes well with that Cary Grand Lip Whip as well. So it has a little bit more mauve to it than all of the other colors that I've been putting on my face previously. So it will really help as a blush and it'll tie everything back together, I think. Just by playing with makeup, don't you feel like you're just an artist? It's just pure artistry. We're just working things out, problem solving, just being creative and kind of moving with the punches, going with the flow and playing with pigments. Like it's so much fun. It is so much fun. It is really giving my lips that matte finish that I love, but it's moisturized because of that lip whip. It is perfect. I'm gonna be fine with that. I'm gonna be happy with that. Let's move into some other products here. Otherwise we'll be here forever. I bought the Nude Sticks Magnetic Eye Pencils in the colors Terra, which is this nice peachy palmy shade. It also leans pretty apricot, but also a little bit of, um, there's like a yellow in there. And then I have the shade Chocolate. So I do keep them in the same tin. Tara, let's move in with Tara first. You can see that I already have a little bit of a tiny baby crease. I'm just going to literally draw on a lot. I'm gonna draw on a lot and then move in with a finger. Patting it in near the lash line. I literally have such a dewy finish to my skin right now that everything seems to want to cooperate because it has a lot of moisture to work with. These can be quite drying because they're meant to set down. They're meant to be a no budge formula, especially for oily eyes. So when I heard that I was ecstatic and they have delivered quite well, but I find that helping it out with a little bit of moisture does help. So I do go in with a little bit on the lower lash line. I've been trying to embrace the darkness around my eyes more. And I have like a little plateau, if you can see right here below my eye where there's just a plateau of darkness and I like to draw right over it to give it a different color. So it's not going away completely, but it is going to be part of my eye look. That's the hint of tone that I really want. And I love that this is going really well with the Bondi Bay color. It seems that everything is starting to take on a little bit of an apricot haze and I am not mad at that. Now this is the color chocolate. I kind of wish that I had gone one shade deeper in their matte shades. This does work quite well as a transition-y slash eyeliner slash base color. I use this almost as a base. So I am drawing a little wing. I am blending with my finger just a little to soften that line and encourage it to live its most blended life. I do have on the sidelines here a little bit of winged eyeliner, but I don't think I'm gonna go in with that today. Instead, I am going to go in with this little chocolate row of beautiful mattes. There are three mattes here and then three shimmers. And these 
These are all from these two Lorac palettes that I am so excited to have. I saw these and why I was interested in Lorac, this is just one of those brands that have fallen off the face of the earth and then have revived upon their 25th anniversary apparently. And I've tried their Pro palette before. I really love the subtlety and the way that they mix their formulas. I actually really love their powdery, really soft formulas. No, these are the Meraki and the Soleil palette. I didn't buy the Noir because I don't wear that many deeper tones, but these are both, and same with the Noir, they're all interchangeable magnetic palettes. So you can see that they forewent all of the names on here so that you can mix and match them. And this does pop up almost like a picture book. And on the back, you can punch out all of those individual shades. It did come with a little card here you can see this was overlaid on top of the product when it first came like this. And so you can still identify the shades. And I didn't want to lose this because, you know, YouTube. So what I did was I just popped this off, stuck this in, and this will always be held by the magnet as my little reference cheat sheet. So I'm keeping that safe and sound in there but it doesn't want to come off, you know? It, it looks like a secret little part of this palette, and I just think it's so smart. You can interchange the colors if you'd like, and the way it came was that it had nine mattes, nine shimmers. Boom! Perfect! It's almost like I had bought a full nine pan palette of a Huda Beauty. I didn't have to buy the Mario, the Makeup by Mario matte palette. I didn't have to buy just shimmers. It felt like I got so many beautiful neutral shades that I could then use in my magnetic palette from Salt New York. Like it was a game changer and I love their formulas. If you're interested in really getting a full pro look at what, you know, colors you may need for the most natural nude neutral looks, this is the palette. This is the mother load. This is the Meraki palette. And it does come, you know, in a different pan size, but you can mix and match the individual eyeshadow pans. And so you can see that I pulled a little bit from here and three from the Soleil. I just have been really loving how warm toned some of these are. They do pull cool as well. And then they had quite a few darker shades here and mattes, shimmer, matte, shimmer, mattes, perfect. Like I knew exactly how to use this palette. I don't know why I've been so blind to these options before, but I, it's just so much nicer to buy a palette that is curated instead of going on to MAC or Anastasia Beverly Hills and pulling out individual, well, ColourPop too, pulling out individual colors. It just takes so much work trying to find that out online where these came perfectly curated. Um, this one supposedly came from a bunch of different artists and they've been like artist approved throughout the years. So I feel like the curation is on point and, and this is the kicker. They don't repeat their shades between those two palettes. I did not compare with the Noir, but it looks like you're getting all different colors in there in both of them. So that's why I bought them both. These are the colors that I had pulled out from the palettes. This is a shimmery kind of satin champagne. This is the true winner here. This is the one that I'm going to use all over my lid. And then I have one that goes a little bit deeper to, to match up the, the lash line. So I find that having that one shimmery shade is so useful because it, it does go over everything. It almost like works as a setting powder, but it gives back that sheen to my eyelids. It starts to work back a little bit of that finish that my skin has. And you'll also find that I'm not going to use a, a brush. I'm just gonna finger paint my way through the rest of this tutorial slash get ready with me chat because now I'm going in with that middle shade and I'll, I'll tell you the shades in a second here. I'll have to look at my little cheat sheet, but this is the saddle brown color and it is just perfect for mixing between that Terra crayon from Nude Sticks and that chocolate shade from Nude Sticks. Here goes the deepest shade. Here it goes. This is being concentrated right on my lash line. And I find that I can finger paint because I already put down the crayon with a little wing that's more precise. So no matter what I'm doing on top, if as long as I don't disturb that winged line, it'll be there. 
that structure will always be there and I can be a little bit more forgiven for my finger painting transgressions. I do want to go in with a little bit of shimmer just because we're on YouTube, we're doing the thing, um, and I'm going to go in with these three colors. I'm not even gonna wipe off my fingers, I'm that grody, but that's kind of what they're looking like. First off, the really bright champagne goes straight into the inner corner, first half of my lid. Next is that warm gold, and that is going straight into the middle. Ready, a little bit of a sunset moment there, and then finally I'm going in with that nice, warm, rosy tone, and that's gonna go almost over everything. Just because I do want everything to have that apricotty, peachy lean. Cover up a little bit of that matte darkness on the edge. These shadows blend beautifully. They are melting in perfectly with each other. There is nothing that I would change about them, to be honest. I'm really, really, really happy with the way that they're looking, that they're smoking out, all of the good stuff. And, you know, with all of this, let's see if I can tell you the shades. From the Soleil palette, in the side of the shimmers, Quartz, Warm Honey, and Euphoria. The first Warm Honey and Euphoria is that pink gold. So Sand was from the Meraki palette. That was the one shade that actually is more of a demi-satin. And then I have Cognac and Espresso. Cognac is that saddle shade that I am really loving and Espresso is here and Sand, if you can tell, is not quite matte. Let's go in with a little bit more brow products and then I'll try on a mascara that I've never tried on before. I always put my products that I'm using in the description box below. My husband is actually out ice fishing right now. Boy brow in black, I can't get away from this stuff. I've tried, I've tried. I thought I was going to live for the Anastasia Beverly Hills dip brow. All right, let's move out just a little bit and I will get back to you on this mascara that I'm about to try. So I guess my lips are basically done too. So really it's just the mascara. We have the Kosas Volumizing and Lash Care Mascara. This is the big clean in the mini size. As you can see, I've never tried it before. So I'm so excited to see what Kosas has spun up for us here. It is an intense black. I don't know if it comes in other colors, but it's only because I love this Limitless Lash Mascara from Ilia. This is also in the mini size. Um, wow, they're very different. Not even a touch-up station, like this is my makeup, plus a lipstick, which I can pop anywhere. I'm just so happy with this. Um, anyway, so this can fit into this chamber here. This looks like it can absolutely fit into this chamber here. Huge wand, holy molars. That looks like one of those pipe cleaners. It looks like its bristles have been chomped off in a concave fashion right on the inside here. So to me, that's a soft plastic. Unlike the Ilia, which to me is a hard plastic thing that has been completely engineered. Comb on the top and then a porcupine on the bottom. I'm getting some lift. Because it's so new, I'm, I'm gonna give it a little bit more time before I give you any final thoughts on this mascara. I also hate tubing mascaras. I'm sorry, I'm so picky. So, so far I am not super impressed with this, but again, I'm going to give it several passes. It is separating my lashes. It is giving a lift, but because of my hooded eyes, there's basically no way that it can just like go over the lip of my eyes. It's very difficult for such short, thin lashes to do so, so I'm not expecting a lot. Okay, let us take a look. Blush does tend to fade a little bit on me, and so having a really strong blush look, at least this is strong for me, having that in the morning and just letting it do its thing and settle in throughout the day, I guess that is a good way to go. So again, I have to make it connect up into my eye look, otherwise I just can't stand having that weird little space. It just looks like everything doesn't make sense on my face. So last, 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 last thing. And you can see that my skin is still extremely dewy everywhere, but we are going to end this little tutorial with the Tower 28 Balm. She is so silky. She does feel like a lip balm, but even balmier. And the slip is unreal. The shine is unreal. It really looks very wet. And I'm not even going to be shy about it. I'm gonna go straight onto my cheekbone, which is where I want the dewiness and the wetness to just be, just to live, just let it live. It is a nice glassy finish, no pun intended. 
not going to be knock you out of the park wet, but it is going to stay rather wet. And it does feel slightly like that, like that gel texture. Not quite tacky, not too bad. Oh, no, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it doesn't pass the hair test. So thank you for being here with me. I'm glad to be doing a little bit more makeup, um, just straightforward makeup stuff with you again. And just to recap, like I'm really excited to see where this Tower 28 brings me. I was debating between buying this and the Glossier Future Dew, which is a product I have never touched before, but I figured since I have such oily skin and my current skincare products and all of these glowy bases that I've been trying, I put those all over my skin basically. It's nice to have a pinpointed glowy dew balm that I can finish no matter what my makeup is, especially if I can like experiment with all of these beautiful nude sticks that are a little bit more matte. I don't have to worry about the finish of my products. I can choose whatever pigments fit me best and then go in with this type of finish, which is what is du jour. You know, it's a la mode right now. It's really popular and I'm really enjoying it. I'm leaning into it, especially since I've been into these cream products. This M Cosmetics Rose Milk, I'm, I have both the Rose Milk and the Venetian Rose. I actually like Venetian Rose on its own much better, but this seems to play really well with that bronzy look, that really subtle blush look that I was talking about. These two seem like a nice pair, the Bondi Bay and In the Nude. Um, I am interested in seeing how this plays with, you know, different combos that I have, but so far these are the two that I'm really enjoying. The Lip Whip, I really can't stress that enough. I really hope that people can try this out. You can't get it at Sephora, but you can get it at credobeauty.com. It's one of the places that I just shop more nowadays because I'm trying to move my collection into a clean, non-toxic beauty space that has a lot more transparency. Obviously no product is perfectly clean, nor would I want it to be. We're putting chemicals, you know, we are chemical. We're putting chemicals on our face. It's just a matter of educating myself. I really love that um, they are more transparent on their website. You can click the full ingredients list. And then from that list, you can click on any ingredient and read more about it. I'm also really loving Lorac Soleil palette. Am I sad that I'm not using these every day? No, because I'm really, really happy with how comprehensive a look I can get from this. And I really am loving all the shimmers. They do have some shimmers that are different textures. So you can see that this one already is pulling a lot more light. It's chunkier. It does have like silver glitter in there. And then the Meraki palette, I cannot recommend enough. Way more options at your disposal. But if I were only to buy one of them, I would buy the Soleil because this seems far more just suited to me and my looks. And it's a smaller palette. I just think that I could move with this and jive with this a little bit more. Having the nine pan, nine pan, way of looking at things is really easy for my brain to digest. The Kosas, the big clean mascara, ooh, yeah, we'll have to give it a go. I'm not quite sold on that. And then between these two, I would maybe buy the RMS Beauty Master Radiance Base again. We'll see how this goes. I really love it, but it's so much product that I feel like I have to like race it to use it up. And then this is kind of the opposite. I am not racing to use this up and yet it is going by so quickly. And the way that this looks is nice, but it's it's almost just a hint too subtle. And this is uh, far more what I'm going for. So between the two, I would absolutely choose the RMS Beauty once over um, and say goodbye to the Chanel when she's all out. And finally, let's take one last look at this gorgeous little compact. I'm gonna put it to my chin like I'm a violin player, but the Salt New York, we cannot forget how well not only this palette is working because it has a mirror, because it zips up, because it has a little Grovering ribbon here that keeps it from falling completely open. So when it's on a desk, you can actually be looking at yourself at the perfect angle. There's so much about this palette that I really, really, really enjoy. It is vegan leather. It has this gold zipper to it. It's just really thought out. And then of course it can fit all these other little accoutrements that fits my life. And I have everything in here. This one little shadow, if you've been wondering, that is the Natasha Denona shadow from the gold palette. It is her sparkly ass shadow. And these four are again, the cream tint pros. And then these are from the Lorac palette. So you can put 
basically anything in here. So thank you so much if you have stuck with me here to the end. I really hope that you'll give this uh, video a little thumbs up. That's the best compliment you can give me today. And we'll see each other on the next video. Adios. Upside down Should only feel this much